Oh, Lord, God, I just praise and I thank you, God, for bleeding and dying on that Oregon cross. Lord, I can't thank you enough, Lord. I, I just pray, God, your uh, blood would be upon me, Lord God. Forgive me my sins and my shortcomings as I claim the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord God. I pray that your will be done today. And I, I pray uh, for the high songs and, and pastor. Keep them safe as they travel from Arkansas down to Texas. And uh, Lord, please uh, let there be no... Uh, bad weather, tornadoes, or anything like that while they're down there. and uh, Just uh, bless them and keep them safe, and Lord, your hand be upon them. Um, and I just pray, God, for everyone else that will be preaching and teaching. Pray for Samuel. Help him. Uh, pray for Ben on Easter Sunday. Help him, Lord God. Just guide and direct everybody, Lord, and your will be done. I, I just thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, um, as I was getting ready for this, um, this is kind of my busy time, but, uh, I still regardless was gonna, I wanted to preach when pastor asked me to get up here, preach and teach. I was, I had my mind set up. This is more important than doing anything else. Um, and like everything, the devil tries to get you out of it and tries to make you not get up and preach or gives you something that happens that knocks you off the track a little bit and tries to take your focus off of it uh what was it right before the uh they left on their trip i'm getting off of work from the nuke and i'm working in emer i was working emergency down there and in the mornings you know i work 13 hours i'm hungry so i'm like i need a breakfast sandwich or something so i went to old crow in the morning right before they left and i pull up and my truck doesn't start when i go to leave to go to my house I got my sandwich, I got my coffee, and here I'm texting Brittany. I'm like, Brittany, did you guys leave yet? <laughs> I'm like, I need Justin. I need Justin down here with a set of jumper cables. <laughs> like, oh, good. We're already on our way down. <laughs> so the high songs had to come bail me out and give me a jump just so I could get home. They're like, you look exhausted. I go, I am. I am. I'm tired. But, um, uh, and even with the amount of time I had to study, I had yesterday. So I kind of know what it feels like to be Pastor Jim because I slept one hour last night. <laughs> I studied all night long and mainly on my sermon and not my Sunday school, which last time I did, I spent a week studying for my Sunday school and only gave my sermon like 10 minutes that I wrote in the back in the library. <laughs> <laughs> and pastor got like four sermons out of it which i don't know how but <laughs> but um i uh my sunday school is just it's not a a, a deep teaching in, in any way um i kind of wanted to tell you guys a little bit of something um about me and um coming to christ the way i it happened with me and how it led up to how I led up to getting saved and um, how things went through life. Um, I had a very godly grandmother, a woman that loved the Lord. And um, I don't know if I was 10 or 12 and she gave me like a vague um, I don't know, vague plan of salvation or, you know, I, I my grandma had had this, like, I know that, that they used to teach that there was a certain age that the age of accountability was, it was another 10 or 12. You know, I, it was before my teenage years. I know that. Um, and my grandma just said to me, you know, Tom, if you want to go to heaven, you just have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And, um, oh okay and she didn't quote any scripture she didn't tell me um anything other than that and i i could remember going home and doing it that night but i i didn't know i didn't know that why i was going to have i didn't know any of that stuff really like i said i was either 10 or 12 but um fast forward to um 21 and I start coming to this church. Um, you know, uh, Brooke had invited me and I start coming. 
And um, I could remember, you know, sitting and listening and it being completely different than anything I've ever heard or seen before, especially when you come out of the Catholic Church and you don't see or hear anything. I mean, you kneel, sit and stand and repeat. And I mean, if you've ever been one, you, <laughs> most people that's never been, there's a kneeling pad that flips up and down in, in front of your pew. Um, but like most of the kids that's been in this church would never even see, no, like, what's that thing for? Well, that's where you get down and kneel and pray. Um, but you don't really hear anything at the Catholic church. Uh, that's where I grew up, St. Titus. And, um, but I came here and it was like a whole nother world. It was like, what is this? This is, this is really good. This is, and I know for the first month that I came, somehow I never got to hear Pastor Kevin. And all I ever heard was Pastor Jim preach. And I could just remember just being back in the back and just being glued to him. Like, wow, this is great. But um, somebody that got to think things out, I, I have to like rationalize and I have to, you know, I guess test it out. And I was listening and, and trying to um see if it was real see if what was being said was legit you know and you study the church and you study the people and you, you listen to how the preacher is and is he for real or is it fake or you know is this put on and um from october to obviously january um I came to the conclusion, yeah, this is legit. This is real. This is this is the real thing. This is um what I I want. Um and I kept stumbling over verses. And there was a verse that just kept ringing in my head and it's not like a typical um it's not a typical verse that you think of whenever you're pondering salvation but i thought of faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god um and that kept playing in my head like wait a minute i never remember hearing the word of god i never remember getting any verses being told to me about um being saved you know i i was i was really confused so um it ultimately that led me to the night of my birthday party up at pastor Jim's um, to talk to him and him. Oh, okay, let's go. And he proceeds to witness to me for four and a half hours. <laughs> I think we started at 11. We ended, I think around three. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Doc said I got off easy. <laughs> well, <laughs> he had been preaching to me for months, brother. <laughs> and um I haven't looked back. I uh I accepted Christ and he cleaned uh me up, I mean like that. And uh there were, you know, I had a foul mouth. I I, I wasn't the one that drank or partied or you know, I went to parties, but I, I didn't do the things in the party. But I had a filthy mouth and I was in the places that I shouldn't have been at. Um, and um, I seen enough of this world and, and been in, you know, plenty of rough places. More so to probably keep my other family members out of trouble than for me to just go because I never... If you're a sober person where there's a bunch of people getting drunk and acting stupid, it's really stupid to watch people act that stupid. <laughs> um, and I haven't looked back. I mean, I, I don't look back at this world and go, man, I miss I miss those things. I don't. There's nothing back there that's worth having. And um, it was obviously the best choice of my life. And I had a rec recent conversation with somebody who's, you know, pretty famous and, and 
um, our world, Sam Gipp. I was talking to him up Pastor Mike's, and I know Phil was there, and we had many <laughs> Pastor Pastor Kevin was like glued right next to him every time Pastor was there. He was just at sitting at the side asking him question after question after question. The one night, oh, Pastor wasn't there, and I'm sitting and I'm talking with him. And he goes, "Brother," he goes, "I sat at church." He goes, "I was an, I was an amening lost man." He goes, I sat in that church for months before I ever got saved. And I kind of just smiled because I never told anyone that, oh, I just sat there for months without being saved. Well, I sat here months under preaching, lost. And it was just comical to me to hear this guy who I look up to, Sam Gipp, and he's like, oh, man, I, I was sitting back here. I was amen. And he goes, and I was lost as could be. And I'm like, wow, that that's pretty good. I go, thank you, Lord. That you know, it's something that you you know you might know, just you and God know, and it just makes you smile. Um, I wanted to get into, and this is, I guess, what God laid on my heart in the wee hours of the night. I'm like, God, I still don't know what I'm going to teach. I, I've been just going over subject after subject because I want you to basically tell what I just said now. And to um, get into some just verses on soul winning. Um, and I know Pastor had written it in one of his Bibles, but this for a long time was one of my favorite verses. And it's in Proverbs. Of all things, Nadine, Proverbs. That's my wife's favorite book. Not mine, but hers. And, uh, we all know this verse, even though it's Old Testament. <clears throat> Go to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. You know, you want to be wise? The door sticks, Pastor. How do you get this thing open? Out there. In the great congregation. There's there's plenty of them. They're not always going to be in here. We're just sitting around waiting for months to get saved like I was. Uh, they're out there. <laughs> you run in them at work and you you run in them to them at sporting events and everywhere else that you you might go to, gas stations, what have you, Tesla charging stations or whatever your thing is. Um, but you should want to be out there leading them. I want you to go to another uh, Old Testament book over to Psalms, over chapter 126. <clears throat> Psalms 126. Psalms 126, verses 5 and 6. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to go out and sow. You're supposed to go out and throw the seed. And what is the seed? The precious seed. <clears throat> Folks, you, you got to go out and, and you got to proclaim this book and you got to tell them the words of this book. And, and that's the key of salvation is these words right here. <laughs> words that I didn't get till later on in life. Um, and witnessing, it, it's not a matter of your opinion. It's not a matter of you, um, what experience you had, but what's going to lead them to the Lord and what's going to convict them and what's going to slice them up and show them their need is right out of God's word, his words, not yours. 
yeah, you, you might have something similar to that person, but the book is what's going to do it because they can't have faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't have that faith without the word of God. You need the word of God. And you have to quote it. And you got to learn it. And you got to study it. That studying just isn't doctrine. But you got to be able to give an answer. You know, when you get in a personal work, you learn pretty quick that you're going to have to learn your Bible better <laughs> because people are going to put you on the spot. It, it's not about you just talking the Bible. It's about you trying to lead somebody to Christ because those are the ones that usually hit you with the questions that you're like, oh, wait, I, I don't have the answer for that. I'll get back to you. And you have to go and you have to study. And it forces you to study. Once you get into that personal work, once you get into witnessing, it really puts it on you to where you have to, you know, I, I got to figure this out. These people really get there's some smart people in this world. Um, so, yeah, you need to get in the book, not only for its doctrine, but you need to tell people about him and have an answer and be ready to give that answer. All right, head over to, head over to John, John 4. John chapter 4, verse 36. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. <clears throat> so what you're sowing, you know, um, I might get in that later. Um you're also going to see the fruit thereof. You're you're gonna you're gonna see when you you lead a person to Christ and, and the joy that you get from it and the joy they get from it. You know, when you go out and you um, proclaim His name, uh, head over to Second Corinthians. I did a, a couple of verses. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Nine, uh, verse six. <clears throat> but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. <clears throat> so the more you do it, the more fruit you're going to see. You may, you, you know, some might see more. But the more you go out and do it, the chances are going to increase because you're doing something more. It's not just like, oh, I did this one time and look at all these souls. I got a thousand souls. Does it go that way? You, you, you got to keep out and keep doing it and keep going and going. And uh, um, you'll eventually start to see your fruit and the Lord will start giving you the souls because it's ultimately him that... Uh, Give it the increase. You know, uh, Paul said, I, uh, um, I so to Paul's water and God give it the increase. Um, it's not all about what you do, but God will do it through you. Head over to second Corinthians or no first Corinthians. My bad. First Corinthians chapter three. Here it is. First Corinthians chapter three, verses six. Er, I have planted, Apollos watered, 
but God gave the increase. <clears throat> so then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Folks, you're going to get rewards for these things. And we all want rewards. We always want to go to heaven. We don't want to go to heaven empty handed. We don't want to just go, oh, I made it. I'm here. But it'd be nice to have some rewards. I mean, you're not going to have the Apostle Paul's rewards. You're like, okay, stay away from Paul because he's just going to make me look bad while I'm up here. He's just gleaming and shining like <laughs> here I am. Just a bum. <laughs> but um, we need to go about it. Like, granted, like I said, Paul wrote 13 books that we hang our doctrine on. And <laughs> it's going to be amazing to see him up there. Let me tell you, every one of us are called to do it. Every one of us. <laughs> every Christian that ever gets saved. Um, I can remember when I first got saved, um, I didn't know how to lead anyone to the Lord. Um, I tell the story about uh, Pastor Kevin used to preach at a Presbyterian church, uh, Mount Pleasant or whatever its name. It's a real big church right there off 18. They built it. It was, uh, it was practically brand new when we went there right off 18, uh, heading towards Shipping Port in Raccoon. And um we went there and pastor preached to all the youth, like all the, like it was like a youth seminar. And um, pastor, like there was a bunch of us from the church that went up with him and he like broke it into groups. And we all had these kids and I didn't know what to do. He's like, hey, talk to him about the Lord, get, you know, lead him to Christ. And I'm sitting there and pastor talked to this, this one's talking to this one. And finally they're all, finished up and they're coming over to me and i'm like i don't know what to do and they're like oh let, let, let us talk to you and then pastor did like this long um how to lead people to christ teaching uh afterwards because you know because he's seen that you know there was a need for it i was i was quite lost in knowing how to do it um head over to Mark, head over to Mark 16. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know what you got to do? Something that's always hard is those two letter words. Go. You got to go out and do it. It's not going to do itself. You have to actually get out. And physically go. Same thing over in Psalms. It says. I'll read it for you guys. Stay right here. <clears throat> Psalms 126 says. <clears throat> they, that's, <clears throat> they that sow in tears shall reap a joy. And he that goeth forth. You got to go out. You have to get out there. And you got to do it. There needs to be boots on the ground when they're when you're at war. You know, you could set over all the bombs and all the planes and but if there's no boots on the ground, you're not going to you're not going to achieve victory. You know, the biggest problem with Vietnam is we flew in, fought them on on a turf and then flew our troops right back off the ground and left it to be retaken again. You know, it wasn't a very intelligent way to fight a war. Usually when you go in like World War Two. You had a mass of, of formations and they came and they took the ground and they stayed there and they kept pushing. Not in Vietnam. It was like, oh, let's fly in, 
Get our troops in there. Let's fight this war. Let's fly them out. Let's go back to base. And it wasn't a conventional war. Like if you look at how Ukraine and Russia are fighting, it's, you know, battle lines coming and going. And that's what we're in today. We're in a war. We're in a war for the Lord. <laughs> and we got to take ground. And we got to lead souls. You know, this world, it, it's a pretty wicked place. I mean, and America's getting it's getting worse and worse. I I um there's a story I, I could tell you. Um I don't know if you know about the Lincoln Park stuff that's going on, but um within the past year there's been five suicides. Now in my entire life I've never heard of one school in one year, kids having to deal with five kids killing themselves. I mean, they really didn't have but one suicide. And uh, I think the whole time I went to Hopewell, there wasn't anyone while we were in school that killed themselves. They had to deal with five kids, you know, um, killing themselves. And a lot of it has to do with this whole agenda America's messed up in with not knowing whether boys are boys and girls are girls. And um, my sister is a, uh, a counselor. That's what she, she does. And, you know, after that fifth suicide, my sister was called in and a group of these people from the state were called in to go there and, and talk to these kids. And um, um, my sister noticed these, girls coming in dressed like boys and my sister was a tomboy growing up and uh my sister could out climb any boy tree and she could ride boys bikes better than most boys and i mean there are girls like that i think probably kelly the same way she could out bench press her brother <laughs> but it, but if we were living like it, if these girls were living back then in the day they'd be shoving this garbage down their throat saying Oh, you're you're definitely a boy. You couldn't be a tomboy as a girl. You you couldn't have a little feminine side to you if you were a guy. Oh, you're you you don't even know what you are. They'd want you to make the switch. Well, these girls came in. They were dressed like boy. My my sister, she's not somebody that does the internet or she don't watch too much TV. Pretty kind of like secluded in a way. Um, but she asked these girls like, "Why are you dressed like?" boys and they start explaining themselves to my sister my sister said to them what you just explained is me when i was your age i did all that stuff look at me i i'm i'm still a girl she goes i'm still a woman i didn't have to change myself because i like to do all that stuff she goes i had best friend guys didn't mean i needed to be a guy And, you know, th this was multiple people that my sister ran into. And, and the girls afterwards said, you know what? You just gave us the best advice we've ever gotten. Because the education system is shoving it down their throat. It's telling them, hey, you're messed up. That's your American society today. That, that's America. <laughs> You got the medical field doing the same thing, saying, hey, questioning little little boys and girls, are you a boy or a girl? And then here, here's some medicine. We'll switch you over to it. We'll get you to be whatever you want to be. <laughs> Yet you can't even go fight in the military until you're 18. You can't do any of this, any things, but you can change whether you're a boy or a girl at that age in our society. And that's the state we're living in, so... We need more and more of us to go out and, and preach the gospel. And these kids today that don't even have a clue what, what they're missing out. They don't know about Jesus. I mean, there, there's kids in churches that, I mean, I, I remember there was this kid that commented on uh, Phil's um, post. And he, he looked like, a, it was, you could tell he was a boy, but I guess he was trying to be a girl. And he grew up in church. It's like... How'd this happen? 
like like you wonder like what's wrong with this world today you, know, you got kids that leave church and 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 get entangled in this garbage and not even on you know bible believing church it just blew my mind like i i couldn't i, I can remember talking to phil in the corner about it like this this person's messed up like what's up with that he goes yeah he's definitely trying to be a girl i i try and talk to him So we need to be diligent about going out and leading this world to Christ because it just keeps getting worse and worse and it keeps getting closer and closer to the time the Lord's coming back. But it's sad to live in this time that like Lot lived in and like Noah lived in because I, I could have never thought it could have got this bad. And as fast as it did. <clears throat> All right, head over to the book of Acts. Get off my little rabbit trail there. Head over to Acts chapter 20. Verses 31. Acts 20, verses 31. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Can you say that you've warned everyone night and day for even three years, for a three year span? Everyone you come into contact with? Paul did. Head over to Mark. We'll head over to Mark. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man? He shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Folks, there are many men who are filling up their silos full, but they're not going to where they need to go. They're going to end up straight in hell. And... We might be their only chance. You might, who knows, you might know a millionaire or a billionaire that's on their way to hell. And you could step in front and say, hey, the building's on fire. You better get out. Head over to First Peter. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. This is incorruptible. Like I said, you sow with it. You go out on the corner and that's what you're calling. That's what you're saying. That's what those signs are doing. They're incorruptible. And you know what they won't? They won't come back to God void. He'll use it. I, I remember Pastor Jim always talking about him and Mary Lou. They were driving and they wondered, went under an underpass. And they're 
except the man be born again, or ye must be born again. And Mary Lou goes, Jim, what's that mean? And he's like, oh, that's his nuts. He has his nuts right in that on that on that tunnel or whatever it was. But he said it always stuck with him. That verse was always there, always in the back of his head thinking about it because he even talked about him reading it in his like Catholic school. You must be born again. And he talked to the brother and the brother goes, oh, you got that when you were a baby. You were born again whenever you got baptized as a baby. But he said, I ne it never sat well with me. So God let that fester for 30 some years or, or 20 some years and, and just be there and constantly remember that. Remember that you must be born again. Hey, if you tell somebody today, you might not know they they might be thinking about it for 30 years of their life and it might be making them crack. It might be breaking them down. Something else. Go over to Luke. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. I told you, Doc, not to get myself in too much trouble with you. This is <laughs> good. good thing I didn't go into deep waters here. <laughs> That's right. I live with that method. Kiss method. Luke 15, verse 10. <clears throat> Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. You know, that actually pleases God when you go out and try and lead Christ people to Christ and, and you go out and, and you see somebody and all the heavens rejoicing over one sinner coming to Jesus Christ. When you go out there, Think about that. Think about what's going on in heaven right after you did. I mean, think about what Pietro had, what, 17 kids or whatever it was at, at that camp. 17 kids getting all excited up in heaven over 17 kids coming to know Jesus Christ. And it's exciting. I mean, anytime you lead one person to Christ, how ecstatic you are. Could you imagine what's going on in heaven? Man, a celebration. Somebody else not going to hell. Like I said, keep your place right there. I'm just going to read real quick for you. Isaiah 55. I already quoted part of it. Okay. Isaiah 55. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. He's going to get what he wants out of his work. He, it does do work. It It is a hammer. It's beating and beating and beating. And yeah, we get, the, you know, a lot of lost people's hearts are rock hard. And, you know, they got their own way. They're going to go that way. And, you know, it, sometimes it's really hard to try and convince someone, but it's not your job to convince them. It's just your job to get that word in there. It'll do its work. It knows what it's doing. It doesn't need your help. You just need to open up your mouth and spill it out. Head back over to 1 Peter. 1 <clears throat> Peter, I think I might even quoted this earlier too. 1 Peter chapter 3. Sometimes I get a little excited. 1 <laughs> Peter chapter 3. In verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Like I said, you're always going to, the lost are always going to put you on the spot. They're going to, they're going to back you into some corners and you're not going to always have the answer for them. But, there, there's a reason you they'll get you there. They'll make you grow. And you'll get sharp with your Bible. You'll you'll get to um pretty much get anybody. You'll be you'll be ready for everybody. Head over to 2 Corinthians. Sorry I'm making you turn your Bible so much, but
2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 20. <clears throat> now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. We're Christ's ambassadors. We're down here on this earth and like, we have ambassadors to every other country in, in the world. They're the face of our country to that country at that time. They're the voice of that country. Well, we're the voice of Christ. And, and Christ needs us to open our mouth so that he can feel it. And that he can speak through you to the lost, to, to this lost country, to this lost world. We're, we're just pilgrims passing through this. We're, we're strangers here. But we need to pull these other strangers out of this world. Um, that's all I I got. I mean, it's around the time we would conclude, anyways.